looking for Bacharach, and that goes in! Hugo Bacharach gives Flint City a 3-2. Buckley, all the ball falls to Buckley. What I want with Etheridge, what a save! Welcome into the first ever MSN All-State Media Day for Girls Soccer. Jonathan Turner alongside Dan Stickrett. Ball comes in, a good hit! Effectively today here on the Michigan Soccer Network, we are launching our new division of player recruitment videos. Mario Canu now finds Sock. Finds Sock's got a left-footed banger. He shoots it! It's in! The Red Hawks, he flies! Welcome back here into UPSL recap number three. And uh, Santiago, welcome back. And... Uh, a busy, busy uh, couple weeks here for the UPSL. No kidding. I think we got about two weeks to catch up on. A lot of goals, looks like, as well through the uh, spreadsheet here. So definitely, definitely ought to chat about. Uh, Duca is continuing to sit atop the table right now. They played six games. Uh, they're five and one uh, overall. They've won five in a row after dropping their first. They've got 30 goals for only six against uh, and uh, again, sit atop the table, one point ahead of Drita SC. Yeah, Duca themselves, uh, like I said a few weeks ago, they've been able to put together a pretty solid roster, a bunch of local guys as well. There's some like highly experienced college guys. Um, you know, I got to know their 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 manager Genty pretty well, and it seems like they've got a good system. They have a good match day, and they've been able to pull out the results. I'm curious to see if. Both they can keep that going as they get into the later ends of the season. And, you know, I don't know if they played all the top teams. I think the last game of the season for them is actually Drita. So that'll come down to pretty much right to the end. So it'll be interesting to see how they, they continue. But even Drita this week, they lost uh, 3 2 to, um, I think it was Pass Pro, dropped the first points, which is, you know, kind of tricky for a team like that that was kind of competing at the top now. So Duke has got a little bit of an advantage going into the next few games with a game in hand and up one point. Yeah, you know, we obviously when we recorded the last show, I was on my way out of town. Um, I was a short stint out of town that didn't end up me. It's like, it was like a, a flight to nowhere is what I would call it. As I uh, <laughs> was on my way to uh, Mexico, I made my way to Memphis and Houston, then went back all within 48 hours. Uh, so I never got to Mexico. But during that week, obviously, we covered the Detroit United versus Hamtramck City matchup, uh, where in that game, uh, Hamtramck won. Um, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, Detroit United won in that game five to two, yeah. um, at Keyworth Stadium. Uh, and, and then the rest of the week there, um, weekend, uh, real Detroit with a 3 1 victory over FK Olympic, uh, pass FC Pro, uh, beat Drita, uh, three to two. And then the United Stars, um, uh, ended up uh, tying against Hamtramck City, uh, on that May the 5th, Sunday night. Uh, so that wrapped up that week. And as we look into what happened here last week, Hamtramck fell again, this time to Real Detroit FC 3-0 on uh, Friday, May the 10th. And then Alianza fell to Detroit City FC uh, one to nothing. So Detroit City FC, you know, two is starting to kind of make some headway here uh, in this season. Um, that was their first victory of the year, uh, I believe, um, in their uh, during this first stint here in the UPSL uh, Midwest East season. Yeah. And then uh, we see that uh, 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 past FC Pro, of, uh, we just talked about that. Actually, they, they – now, this is interesting because maybe the this is up to the spreadsheet's not right. Um, no, it is right. They, they tied FK Olympic Macomb uh, one yeah, to one. one. And then uh, Duca uh, ended up being United Stars uh, three to two here on uh, Sunday night. So uh, on Mother's Day. So, uh, you know, uh, Drita, Duca is continuing to roll, as we talked about. Um, and you mentioned Drita as well. They're 4 L and 2 so far this season. They've got 16 uh, goals for 7 against. Um, and again, yeah. you mentioned it's really lining up here for that last game of the season as those teams will face off here uh, with the week of uh, June 15th and 16th um, here on that Sunday night. Yeah, but if you look at the, even the goal score list right now, um, Duca's got three of the top four. Um, with Arde, who's their who's their leading goal scorer, with eight goals, and the next two guys 
Um, looks like Dennis Cali and Andrew Dekarjian with five goals apiece. So at 18 goals between three guys at the top of the goal scoring leaderboard, definitely a team to watch. Score a ton of goals, you know, 27 goals in five games, averaging about five goals a game just over, which again is for a league like this is, is pretty impressive. Um, looking at the other teams like Detroit United, for example, they have 15 goals in, in four games. Even Drita has 16, but in six games. So their their goal scoring is definitely definitely up there. And same with uh, Detroit City FC coming back off two losses early on. They're finally starting to get things moving. So we'll be curious to see if they can kind of get a little bit of momentum going into the next game, which is tomorrow they play against Dearborn United, a team that also needs to to get some points. So I think there's it's it's still pretty wide open, to be honest. Uh, there's only two undefeated teams between Duca and uh, Detroit United, and I think they tied against each other, which is the only points that they've each lost. So, yeah, I think it's right there. I think eventually – in the next probably week or so, we're going to have a pretty clear picture as to the top six teams and who's really going to make a break for the, for the playoffs. But I think right now, the the championship especially is definitely still on the cards. And no question about that. I mean, we're at the halfway point, just crossing over is there's only 11 weeks in this season that we headed into the playoffs. Uh, and again, the top six teams are the ones to make it to the next round, right? To make it through to the playoffs. Uh, the first two seeds will get a first round buy, so to speak. And then, uh, so they would see, uh, the remaining teams in a semifinal. Um, again, Allianz FC uh, right now, I'm sorry, uh, Duca, Drita, Detroit United, United Stars, uh, Pass FC Pro, and FK Olympic Macomb are all right there in the mix in those top six. Uh, and then you got Real Detroit and Allianz FC are kind of right below that line right now. Uh, there's not a lot of points separating uh, Allianz FC from Detroit United. Detroit United's got 10 points so far this season, as well as United Stars SA. Uh, Allianz has got four points. Um, FK Olympic has seven. Real Detroit has six. So a couple wins in there, uh, and we could see some jumping here into that top six and a chance of fighting for those playoff spots. 100%. The way I always looked at our conference with this stuff is I look at not necessarily the amount of points or games or anything. I, just, I consider everything as points lost because I, I go from, like, the max amount of points you can get. So, for example, with Duca – They've dropped a total of two points. So that means their maximum points would be 31 because 33 times 11 minus two. Um, so if you look at points dropped, uh, you know, Drita has dropped six points. Uh, Detroit United has only also dropped two points. United Stars dropped eight points. So it, it, a lot of them are still quite in the mix. And even with games at hand and whatnot, it's not even really over for anybody. Like anyone can get the same points. You have three teams with the same, pretty much the same record with the two, one and two. Uh, except for United Stars, just got one more game played, but they're 3-1-2. and two. So I think any of these teams could easily get back in the playoff picture, especially because you still got to play a lot of the teams at the top of the table too. So I think it's still quite open-ended. No question about that. So th through 52 uh, matches so far, 114 goals have been scored. Um, it's pretty impressive to think about that. So just over two goals a game for, for the entire uh, set up here so far through these first six weeks of the season. Um, at, well, it, first six weeks is this is the seventh week coming up here this week. Uh, it's a lot of goals being scored. You think about uh, goals against it, obviously, it, exactly the same 114. Uh, but you look at this, Duca right now owns 27 of those goals. Um, and uh, it's, that's pretty impressive. Almost 25% of overall goals scored uh, coming from just one team out of the entire 11 team uh, group here. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I think they've pretty much shown that they, they're a team to beat. Um, I think they had an 8-2 win a week or two ago against um, Detroit City FC, which definitely like propelled them forward and the goals and the, uh, the goals being scored. But even um, even Detroit United, I know David Tatai came back from injury. They posted him on the on the Instagram, seven goals in two games. Uh, so going into this weekend... Detroit plays in United Stars, which is a team that needs to get points as well. They're right below them in the, in the tied with them in points, but they have two games in hand. So both teams are going to want to get points. And I think Detroit United being usually one of the leading teams in the, in the division is definitely going to try to keep fighting at the top. They're probably, I would say they're tied for first right now in, in the in my calculations of points back. So they have the same record as Duca, just one, one less game played. So it'll be interesting to see if they can get that win against one of the top teams as well and, and really make a difference. But the other thing I was going to note is Hamtramck City coming from winning the fall. Now they're in second from the bottom, two ties, two losses, no wins. I think it's it's interesting to see how much can change in, in you know, seven, eight months. You know, they were they ran through the division in the fall and they had 
pretty much no one contending with them. Like no one really gave them much of a trouble. They have a similar roster too, but I think in the summer season, the quality of overall players is, is a lot higher. And I think um, more regular as well. I, I also think, cause again, we talk about this, we're going to let's, let's, pre- what I want to do is I want to preview this upcoming week first and let's hop in. I have a couple of questions. I want to get into some things that came up here during a broadcast we did this weekend. Um, so real quick here, week number seven, uh, coming up this Saturday and Sunday, uh, real city FC is taking on Dearborn United, uh, Dearborn United right now sitting at the bottom of the table. Uh, they played four games. They've lost all four games so far. They've allowed, uh, 23 goals against and four goals for. So a uh, very interesting matchup here between the, the, the last place team and the third to last place team in Detroit city FC. Um, you've got uh, real Detroit taking on Duca uh, real Detroit right now is sitting uh, seventh in the table. Uh, they've got six total points. They are currently uh, two and three uh, so far this season, Allianz FC and Dearborn United FC. Uh, we're going to see that matchup here actually on Saturday night. Uh, the, the game of the week here for the UPSL uh, will be on the UPSL YouTube channel. We'll be out there covering that game at 8 PM Eastern. Uh, again, Allianz FC sitting eighth right now. Uh, so you've got Dearborn United's got two games this week. So it's interesting to see how they rebound after game number one on Wednesday uh, and, and what they do here on Saturday night. United stars, uh, taking on Detroit United. Uh, you mentioned how important those points are here this weekend. United Stars currently sit fourth. Detroit United currently sitting third. Uh, and then uh, you see uh, past FC Pro is taking on Hamtramck. Uh, past currently sitting fifth in the table. Hamtramck, as you said, is 10th or second from the bottom. So very key points here, key uh, matches here this week, which could make, as you mentioned, kind of shake things up and kind of see where we're going to be here in the coming weeks. Hundred percent. I think too with um, Real Detroit. I feel like that's kind of a team that's been lurking in the background, but they're coming off two wins. They had a win against Olympic Macomb, who was at the top of the table, not dropped a bit more. And then last week they they got another three nothing win away at Keyworth. So to to Hamtramck City. So that's another team that could potentially go and upset somebody quietly, and maybe it might be overlooked by some. But I think all these games, especially the. Um, United Stars versus Detroit United, I think, is going to be a pretty good test for both teams. Um, Detroit needing needing the points basically to stay in the in the championship race, but also United Stars that you know coming off last week, kind of a tough result. Hopefully, they need the points to kind of get back in the picture after losing to Duca, who's right above them in the, in the standings. So, I think these two games, especially uh, especially the ones that we're covering this weekend between um, you said Alianza and Dearborn, that game itself. It's a it's a must win game for both those teams. Like Alianza needs to get those points to get back at the top six to to fight for playoffs, and then Dearborn as well. They they've yet to get any points four games into the season, and it's kind of coming to that crucial point where if you can't get the wins now, then you know the season's pretty much a write off. So there's a lot of tasty games this week, especially even next weekend too. So it'll be good to to kind of keep an eye on all that. Well, yeah, and you look at it too, Allianz, like, you know, there's, when you start talking about wh- where we are right now in this season, uh, you start about four and five games in, um, you know, your your identity starts to really start to show, right? What you are, your makeup and how your team's going to perform the rest of the season. I'm not saying that it's like a, like set in stone, but you have a pretty clear idea of how a team's going to be performing, right? Duke is not a joke. They're for real, right? They've won four games uh, uh, and they've tied one. They're undefeated. They scored 27 goals. So we know they're for real. Right. We don't quite know what Allianz is yet. Right. We don't quite know. We, we don't. I mean, I would say through four games with Dearborn, we might have a general idea. Are they going to be able to move up into the top six? Probably not. So what Allianz has to do is they go take care of business. Right. And that's and that's what when you look at the table for what it is, you know, Allianz needs to beat the team they're supposed to beat. Right to get back in the mix, uh, Duca's can try to can, what they want to do to stay to number one is they have to just keep winning, uh, keep doing the same thing they've already been doing, um, and they should be in that top 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 three at the end of the season, no matter what happens. So, um, the reason I wanted to kind of save this this question at this point to the end is when you start talking about the fall, but the fall is a very different makeup for the UPSL than it is the spring. All right, I, I think you would agree with me on that, right? It's a very different. 100%. Makeup of teams. And the reason why I say that is that, and this is where, when we talk about Detroit United, Detroit United is the quintessential um, team that is built to go for long runs. Uh, and, and the reason why I say that they're built that way is because their core group of players, we've talked about this before is always there. 
And so, yeah, they're going to have some young kids come in throughout the summer, but their makeup is pretty much the same every season, fall and spring. And so it's the same team. And that, that, that really propels them and gives them the, the ability to be consistent when it comes time for playoffs and going on to play in a national tournament. Um, Hamtramck, the reason why they've been successful in both the fall and the spring, same thing, right? They have these makeup of players that are basically uh, all kind of playing uh, in the same grouping. Cedars FC was in there for a long time, and Cedars FC yeah. team, same thing. They would have the same core group of players, and that those three teams were fighting every single season to be in that number one, two spot. Usually you'd finish in the top four, and then you'd find Cedars and Detroit United typically fighting in the championship game. Uh, and obviously, Hamtramck City and Detroit United did it this past fall. But uh, the reason why I think it's important is, is, is when we start talking about what happens come fall, will Aduka be able to still be the same team in the fall? Because that's been the hurdle for these spring and fall teams is to be consistent into the fall. Do they lose a bunch of college kids, right? That's a big deal. When we start, to, And that's yeah. why I like the Midwest Premier League, which is only run. And I, the reason I'm bringing their, their, their league up in this show right now is because a question came up is what's the difference between these two leagues? It keeps coming up. And when you ask yourself talent for talent, they're the same players, you know, yeah. same players are playing in both leagues. But if you ask me the difference between the Midwest Premier League and the UPSL, there's a money component to this that the other leagues don't offer. There's a money component, yeah. right? There's money on the line. Um, do I think that the leagues are ran differently? Of course they are. But at the end of the day, um, all leagues are basically the same as far as I'm concerned. They're people in charge and, you know, <laughs> And, and things go one way or another in regards to, you know, the politics of soccer. And that's not unique to the UPSL or to any league in that, in that matter. There's always red tape and stuff you got to deal with. But at the end of the day, is there a significant difference between the Midwest Premier League and the UPSL when it comes to talent? No, I would say it's pretty much, it's all relative, right? Because at the same time, like NPSL and in, in Western New York area where we play, for example, those teams aren't necessarily much better. Like we, there's a new team from Buffalo called uh, Niagara 1812, and it's actually owned by a Canadian group. They joined NPSL this year, and the two preseason games they played, they played against um, Upstate United, which is a newly promoted UPSL team. They lost three two, and they played against Chantilly Forever, which is a UPSL team from Canada as well, and they lost two one. And Chantilly hadn't really won any games in. They never won a game in the Midwest, and even in the Western New York region, they've won like three or four games total. But then that team, Chantilly, then went up to that Syracuse FC, which is a team that we've never beat, and they also play at NPSL. So I think it's it's all relative. It doesn't really matter. I think anyone can beat anybody. I would say the biggest difference to me, in my opinion, is just in the name, right? Like the UPSL has like money, and it's a national league. Whereas if you win the Midwest, cool, you're the best in the Midwest. Like you're just stuck being the best in the Midwest. And that's like one region out of 350 million people. So I think it's, it's regionally, I would always, the difference that I always say is the UPSL is just a national league. Um, whereas leagues like Midwest, and I, I'm not the kind of person either. I don't like talking down. I think all of it's good for football. I think competition is good for everybody in every sense, because at the end of the day, the more opportunities there are, the better it is. And I like the fact that there's leagues out there that can provide everyday people with the opportunity to become club owners and, and create something unique to their community and start something fresh. So I think even with the Midwest Premier League, we've seen a lot of UPSL teams go there and come back and go there. And teams like AIM went there for a year, came back here, withdrew from this league. Like it's, there's also like a standards-based approach to, to a lot of the application requirements and NPSL being on technically on the same level in the pyramid as UPSL and everything else. The, the fact that it's like a 15K to 20K buy-in now to join MPSL and the, the level of play isn't necessarily much better than you would get at like the top end of UPSL teams. I don't think the financial component, unless you're really out there and you have a proper club, Detroit City FC started in, in NPSL too. So you can see like the progression of those kinds of teams, but you also need like the big financial backing. So I think UPSL presents a good opportunity for these community-based clubs like Duca who come out of kind of nowhere um, you know, they have a, a good history in the region, but the first time they join a league like this level, they're able to recruit good players, have a nice match day experience, and now they're top of the table. So I think it it kind of goes to show the efforts people are putting in. No, it's a great point. And and I and I did I did mention this and we've because again we cover we cover all things, uh all, all levels here in Michigan. So for us, you know, we we cover inner Detroit, 
uh, and, and Michigan Stars who play in the Midwest Premier League. Um, and again, you're seeing, you're see and then there's a USL too, right? And you say, well, what's the difference between USL League Two and the UPSL? Uh, again, I, I, th I think anything else. I think that the standards for which games happen start to kind of rise, right? There are certain standards that these leagues are requiring, and, and you, there's a dollar value, right? So to get into the UPS, the USL League Two, there's a significant investment that teams have to make. Yeah. Uh, so exactly. you have to have a some, some serious bankroll in order to uh, to pull that off, but. The same, like I so said, for Michigan Stars, there's a guy named Rocco Galati, right? Rocco Galati is a fantastic player. He plays for their Midwest Premier League team in the Michigan Stars. He plays for the Oakland County FC on the USL League Two side, right? And I can guarantee you that if there was a team in the UPSL, he'd probably find himself there this summer as well. I mean, these players are going to go play where it gives them the best opportunity to, one, to get as many touches on the ball as they can and to give themselves an opportunity to be seen in many different places so that they can rise up and go play in a USL League to a USL Championship or League One uh, type of because they all want to get there, right? They all want to get to that next level. Not all, but I mean, a good chunk of them want to be seen and go play at the highest levels that they can possibly play at this sport. And a couple summers, ago, a couple summers ago, we saw uh, a player here who was playing at that time for the Michigan Jaguars in the Midwest Premier League, and also I think I think he also played in the UPSL as well. Uh, but Alex Dalu. Right, Alex Dalu. If you don't know who Alex Dalu is, he's a local product here in Michigan, uh, and he's now playing in the USL Championship. Right, so yeah. uh, you know, so again, I mean, it, it, and he's a phenomenal player. Uh, you, you just, you just, you, these players are all trying to get there, and uh, that question keeps coming up: what makes the difference? And again, if if Detroit United were to go play in the Midwest Premier League, I think they'd be extremely dangerous in that league. I think you take some of the teams that are in that in that Midwest Premier League team group and bring them into UPSL, get very dangerous. I think, uh, matter of fact, Inter Detroit was actually in both leagues at the same time here a couple of years ago, um, and they won the Midwest Premier League. But they did not win um, the UPSL. So uh, it just kind of goes to show you that it's uh, it's come to, the the talent can be very much the same. Uh, it's the 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 end product uh, of the league. Yeah. Very different. Um, and well, I think I feel brand. like in the states they get they get a lot of they get a lot of flack sometimes, and and soccer people in the U.S. But honestly, like the system in the U.S. when it comes to this minor league stuff, like with the lack of promotion and relegation being like out of the question, it's actually really like player centric. Um, just as a like just to, as a different look in in the U.K. or even in Canada, I was talking to when I went to I went to Europe with with my girlfriend in the summer, and I I met up with her like family friend and he plays like Sunday league there with this like team. And he showed me some pictures. It was hilarious. They were like, there's just like terrible fields. It's just everything you hear about Sunday league soccer. But the thing is, is like, I talked to him and we were like, cause he was, he wanted to learn more about our club, about the UPSL and like how it all works because we're like fourth tier. I mean, they were like 10th tier, but I told him and I, I, I asked him, it was like, technically speaking, like how many years do you have to like become a champion to be in the Premier league? And I think we decided it was like, he needed to win. 15 or 16 straight promotions and they were in the Premier League. And so I just, I thought that was kind of funny, but basically what I found out too is there, you know, if he signs for that Sunday league team, like he's kind of like booked for that team because, because of the promotion relegation system, it's like, everything is like Premier League. So that means like, if you play for, let's say FC Berlin is in the 10th tier of the English pyramid, you cannot play for any single other team, even if it's beer league, like it doesn't exist. You are stuck with that team. That's the oh. only team you can play for. In Canada, it's the exact same thing. So any competitive team, no matter where you are, you can only be registered at one time. So I'm registered with a team here, um, you know, in League One Ontario, and I can't go and play in like another men's league. I have to play in that only for that team pretty much the whole season. Uh, you can get away with it. There's some recreational leagues, you know, like more like house leagues, like like actual beer leagues that you can still play being registered to a club. But in the U.S., like there's no real restriction on that. Like you can play in USL League 2, UPSL, NPSL, and NISA all at the same time. And there's like no like risk. As long as you don't break your own contract, there's technically – I asked the Christian who's the VP of the league one time, and he, I think he explained it has something to do with like – the, the rights or something in the charter, but it basically means that they can't lock you to one team after you like you're older than 18. So because of that, guys like the guy you're talking about can go play, like you can go play USL League Two with whatever team, and then you can go play a game with the UPSL team. We had guys from the United Stars asking us if guys from their Nisa team could play, and 
the answer is like, yeah, like as long as you like as long as you don't break their contract. I told the Detroit City guys too, they can use guys from USL Championship if they wanted to. Like we had guys from USL from that USL Championship team playing in the league last fall. Like you into Detroit signed like two or three of the guys from Detroit City that if they wouldn't travel, they would just come and play in the UPSL. So I do think that it does keep things very open. Like you say, it's just a good platform for all of it. Um, but what I've noticed with some of these breakoff leagues, um, being a little bit more on the cynical side, is that, yeah, they, they have the same kind of idea, but they're just lacking, like, the execution. So you've seen, like, a lot of, like, basically a lot of mismatches. There is, um, there's this one team in Western New York called Rock City Boom. They've won the league three years in a row. Um, the club, it's a sick club. They do a really good job. Last year, they didn't win the league. And this year, they kind of broke off in the UPSL and created, like, their own Nice Nation Conference. Um, so they joined forces with NISA, created a conference in Western New York. And the teams that followed them weren't any of the good teams. It was the bottom half of the table teams from our Western New York conference. And one team that got relegated last year. And then one or two teams that were either Division One UPSL teams or whatever. So they broke off to create what they thought would be a, or what they said would be a higher level division. But at the same time, it ended up being like basically bottom table UPSL teams. Do I think there's value in that? Sure, because it's still like competitive. It's still the same kind of level and everything. But it's not, in my opinion, it's not the same. So I think it's it's all good value. There's a whole lot of benefit for everybody. But at the end of the day, I think just players have to find their fit. You know, be where they're where they're appreciated and where where they're um you know taken care of. And it seems like the teams that we have this year are all very good for that. Um, they have a lot of people that have been playing for years in the same division. So. Yeah, it's it's good to see on the other end of that that things are starting to change in, in, in the Michigan area. And it, it's good for the for the you know the, the betterment of soccer in the area that we have both NISA, USL teams, championship, league two, there's everything within a one hour drive of Detroit. So for any player that's coming up, I think there's a lot of opportunity now. No question about that. Santiago, man, we appreciate it. Uh, that's a wrap here on our UPSL uh, week number three recap show. Back here next week, we'll have highlights from the Alianza uh, Dearborn United matchup here uh, in that show as well. Uh, and we'll dissect and break down the week's results and look ahead to the, the week number eight results uh, and schedule here as well.